Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video back on the subject, yes, of Julian's health, older men and their health issues. Now, I'm, this isn't an update on uh, that occasion a couple of weeks ago, that most enjoyable occasion when I got shafted by Steve Barkley because I was having a biopsy of my prostate. Now, that, uh, that particular uh, update is still to come. Now, this is another issue. I know all these health issues, as you know, which I won't bore you with. And as it happened, I wasn't very happy with my eyesight. I just didn't think I could see very well. So I decided, I know, as I'm getting all the rest of my body sorted out, I'll go and see the opticians. So I went and see the optician, had an eye test, and he said, I can't make your eyes any better than they are at the moment because you've got a cataract problem. And he said, what I suggest is I'm going to refer you to an ophthalmologist, which is like an optician, but one who's got qualifications, and they're going to sort you out. So they did, referred me to a, a very nice uh, doctor who I refer to as my private eye doctor because he was private and he's an eye doctor. It's a bit of a lame joke, I know, but bear with, bear with. Went to see him, very nice man, and he checked me over and he said, yep, uh, you've got cataracts in both eyes which need to be sorted out and you've also got a problem with the membrane in your left eye. So we can do this operation for you privately. And he's like rubbing his hands like that. He obviously saw the opportunity to get some nice foreign holidays out of me or perhaps a new air fryer but anyway I said okay fair enough let's do it and because it's private of course because I'm not should I have waited for the NHS to do it well yes and no if you can't see properly and it's causing you some issues and you can afford to get it done privately then my advice to you is get it done if you can't afford to do it privately, well, then wait for the NHS, and the NHS will do a very good job. And I wouldn't necessarily have had to wait all that long. But anyway, I decided to do it privately, so I did. And I had the first cataract in my left eye, this is my left eye, by the way, um, yesterday. And so I thought I'd fill you in on how it went. Now, the first thing was, well, you, you I went into to the hospital, private room, obviously, because I'm paying private, and the nurse comes in, and she stuck a bit of tape over my eye like that you see in other words to indicate that it's the left eye and you think nurses i mean sure you don't know the difference between left and right so anyway then the, then the doctor comes in well he's a consultant so they're not all called doctors which is why something i can never understand he comes in, he's got a felt tip pen and he makes a mark on there and i'm thinking a fucking doctor doesn't know the difference between left and right anyway so then i had to have some eye drops to dilate the pupil so my pupil Right, and that, this is the kind of round bit in your eye, or the, the eye anyway. It starts to get bigger, right? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm there for an hour, and I'm thinking it's going to come out of my fucking head in a minute. And then she comes and she gives me some more drops. It gets bigger and bigger. And he looks like a Zeppelin, right? You know the, the graph Zeppelin? People people start buying tickets and they get into it and they think, oh, we're, we're going off for a trip. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm like, ah, I took a photograph of it, which I won't show you yet, but I looked a bit weird. Anyway, and then, oh, they, they came in with the menu. And I thought, I mean, the operation's only going to be there for half an hour or so, but because it's private hospital, you see, you get you get a sandwich and you get a tea, and it costs 39 quid, and the tea is uh, 24.95, I think, which I thought was quite good value, decent tea as well, but China Cup, but that came later. And then they say, okay, you can, you can keep your clothes on, but you have to wear a gown. Yeah, well, that's a bit weird. So anyway, so they put the gown on me, and the nurse comes along and said, right, I'm going to take you to the theatre. And he gets this wheelchair. And I'm like, you know, you know that film Misery? Is it Misery where James Kahn is the writer and a woman comes in and breaks his legs with a baseball bat? I think they can do that to me. They can break my legs and then put me in the wheelchair. So I said, I, said, I can't walk. <laughs> I'm a fucking cataract. I can't walk. He says, it's a long way. And uh, you'll need the wheelchair when you come back. So I said, okay, you know, don't fight it, Julian, don't fight it. So I got in the wheelchair, they put a blanket on me. So I look like a, you know, old, old invalid. And they pushed me through the corridors of the hospital. Very nice hospital, private hospital, new, you know, very smart, clean. Not the NHS hospitals aren't clean, of course. And uh, we go into the theatre and then they, they put you down on, on a very flat a flat bed, you know, and the, the thing about the biopsy, well, not the biopsy, that was different, that was Stuart, but you know, the MRI scan, and I said, it's like, it's like lethal injection. Why is it that everything in my life at the moment seems like I'm going to be executed? Anyway, so I'm on there and I'm kind of strapped down. They put a blanket over you because they say it's quite cold in there. And the theatre, there's hundreds of people. You can't believe it. It's like, it's like the National Theatre. You think there's going to be a production of Othello or something like that. Anyway, and then they, um, what they do, he put, puts this kind of tight, um, it, what's it like? Um, 
it's kind of sticky, like a big uh, band-aid or something. So it's holding your eye open, if you like, uh, really wide. Obviously, I took my glasses off because they, they recommend that. And then they put some anaesthetic drops in your eye. So it's a local anaesthetic. So you're awake for the thing. Okay, And obviously, you're lying flat on your back. You're looking up and there's a great big, big shining light down on your eye. And then the, the consultant, he comes towards you and he's got all his, and because you can't, you can't see properly, of course, because you've got this big light shining in your eyes and you, you haven't got, um, you haven't got your glasses on. He's holding implements in his hands and you think, what is that? And you think it's like a, you know, it's a park tool, five millimeter Allen key. You think, what does he need that for? And he's got this massive great pair of scissors and, and, a, and a hatchet. And, and, a, and a drill and, and, I don't know, like a, um, a pair of pliers. And you think, what the fuck is going on? And then he, come, he comes closer. And of course, now, what it reminded me of, you remember that film Marathon Man? Laurence Olivier, Dustin Hoffman, great film, great film. And Laurence Olivier is an ex-Nazi. Is there such a thing as an ex-Nazi? No, he's still a Nazi, but it's after the war. And he's a dentist. And uh, he's trying to find out whether Dustin Hoffman knows a secret about him. Uh, so he tortures him in the dentist's chair, see. So Dustin Hoffman's like, uh, like that. And Lawrence Olivia comes towards him, because he's got one of those lights on his head. And you see him come towards him with these instruments. And he, and he says to Dustin Hoffman, is it safe? Is it safe? And he goes, ah! And Dustin Hoffman goes, ah, ah, And he goes, is it safe? Ah! Is it safe? Shall I do that again? Ah! Is it safe? So I'm thinking, this is like Marathon Man. Anyway, so he, get, he starts... Not Lawrence Olivia, I'm back to the, the surgery now. So the consultant starts digging in, he starts sawing away, he starts, you know, gets a shovel and a pickaxe, you know, there's a chainsaw. And um, then he says, I'm going in, he's like Steve Barkley going into my house, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And he says, I'm removing the lens. And you think, I can't see anything, because like, you want to know, what, what the hell is a cataract, do you need? Okay, cataract is, do you really, um, not eat, do you ever drink? Um, Perno, Ricard, Uzo. I remember I went to Athens when I was about 19 and I got unbelievably paralytically drunk like in this bar at the base of the Acropolis on, on Uzo. And I actually left my camera behind in the restaurant and somebody very kindly uh, took it and gave it back to me in the hotel. Anyway, if you've got like um, Perno, Rico, or Uzo, or whatever it is, you know you, it, it's a clear liquid and then you put water in it and it goes all cloudy. Now, if you can imagine your eye going all cloudy so your vision gets sort of blurred and as the cataract gets worse it gets more and more cloudy and the, the vision kind of closes in like that until you end up with, with, with nothing at all so what they do with a cataract i didn't know this until the ophthalmologist explained it well, why would i they remove your existing lens and they replace it with a with a plastic lens now one thing that strikes you about this is you think well if they can fix your eyesight why don't they do that for everybody who's got glasses I mean, it seems like a no-brainer to me. I suppose it's, I mean, it's an expensive operation, but even so, you think, well, if you could sort everybody out like this, why don't they do it? Anyway, that's a thing for Steve Barclay maybe to consider while he's thinking about giving the nurses a pay rise, which he obviously doesn't intend to do. So that's what a cataract is. They take your existing lens out, they replace it with a plastic lens, which works properly, and the operation lasts half an hour, 20 minutes. It's not painful at all. You feel a little bit of pressure on your eye. You feel a little bit weird because it's coming at you with all these tools. And there is a bit, actually. There was a bit. Well, you hear this sound of a dentist drill, and you think, what's he doing, what's he doing? And you go, of course you can't fucking see, because your left eye is the one that's being operated on, your right eye, you see, which is this one, it's kind of looking over there, so you can't, you're trying to look over here, you see, you can't, you can't see anything. So then I get off the, um, the, the bed, once it's all finished, and they put me in the wheelchair, and they back me up warmly, and I'm sitting there, right, and all, this, all these people are milling around. And a consultant comes over, and I say to him, well, you know, should I be able to see now? Because there's like signs on the wall that I can't read. I think, why can't I read that? And he's like, he's waving his hand in front of my face. And I'm like, I'm not fucking blind, mate. I'm, telling you, I'm not Stevie Wonder. You know? And uh, he says, give it a few days, Jill. Give it a few days. So anyway, then uh, um, I went back to the room um, because you have to have your blood pressure checked. I had my sandwich, I can crest sandwich, one of my five a day. Very nice cup of tea, China cup. Yep, only 39 quid and 24.95 for the tea. I was like, very nice, lovely service, very nice nurses, etc., etc. I did pay for it, but. Anyway, why not? And then I went home, I got an Uber. Got an Uber. And the second time I got an Uber, I love Uber. I love Uber. Really nice driver, uh, really friendly, really chatty. Said he'd been doing it for seven years. And he had a Kia 
Kia fully electric car, 39 grand, he said. I'm not being paid by uh, Kia to say this. Um, and he gets a range 400 miles in the summer, 350 miles in the winter, because the heater takes up a lot of um, power. So what happens, right, is there's no heating in the car. Right? Lovely car, beautifully comfortable, leather seats, and I'm freezing my fucking arse off in the back of this car. My eyes all weeping and stuff like that. So anyway, nice drive. It took me home. Not too much, too, too expensive. And then I got home and I sat down. Now, part two of this video, which is not going to be a separate video, part two is going to be now. And this is, right, things all went a bit pear-shaped then. Not in terms of the eyesight, but I was, sit I was sitting on the sofa and I was thinking to myself, right, um, I can't cycle because I have to rest my ass for two weeks because of the prostate biopsy. Okay? I can't do any exercise, lift any weights, do any sort of stretching, stuff like that, because I've got a hernia. And now, because I can't see anything, I can't read. Okay, now those are the kind of three things, not really the exercise, but you know what I mean. They're the cycling and the reading, those are the two things that I really like to do, and I couldn't do either of them. So then, because my eye was, was quite sore, and it was gritty, and it was a bit watery, and it was blurry, I started feeling a bit sorry for myself. And I did, I'll be honest, and I was feeling a bit, a bit down and a bit miserable. So the second part of this video, which, and I mean, I know, you know, I do all these videos and uh, I, I try and make jokes. I mean, I know they're, they're not always that funny, but, you know, I just kind of try and lighten the mood, you know, a bit of levity, a bit of self-deprecation, that kind of stuff. But the fact is, I wanted to say to you, um, guys, and by which I mean, don't be, I don't just mean men, older men, w women, kids, I mean everybody. And that is, it's okay to feel a bit down, okay, sometimes. It's okay to feel a bit shit. It's okay to feel a bit miserable. It's okay to feel a bit unhappy. It's okay to feel a bit undepressed. It's okay to think, you know, actually, I'm not all that uh, happy at the moment. I don't feel like laughing. I don't feel like joking. I don't feel good about stuff. I'm just feeling a bit miserable. And what I'm going to say is, um, and I suppose in a way, because we're, I'm a, a man and an English man, and you're supposed to, you know, show your emotions and stuff like that you try and laugh things off and say well actually it's not all that bad and so forth I'm saying well actually sometimes you don't feel like that sometimes you think actually life is shit you know and I'm not really enjoying it I'm just not happy um and my wife was saying to me oh, you know you're looking like an invalid because I put a blanket and blanket over me and I said well I'm cold darling you know because we kind of the bloody heating on the cost of living crisis countries falling apart got shafted by Steve Barkley, who's now shafting all the nurses. I just, uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to finish this video on. Not on a kind of downbeat note, because I'm, I'm kind of okay now. My, my eye's not gritty. I can feel my eyesight getting a bit better. I think I was back on the bike today because my, my arse has healed up. Uh, can't do the exercise because I've still got the hernia. But you know what I mean? I will be able to read in a couple of days. So I'm kind of I'm back to feeling a bit better. But all I wanted to say, everybody, guys, ladies, kids, whoever you are, it's okay sometimes to feel a bit rubbish. Don't worry about it. Don't feel bad about it. Okay? So, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching. See you next time for the next health update or who knows, something else.